And just like that, we're live. This is Corey and this is the, the end of the podcast. Just <laughs> like that. <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. It's Rob. Welcome to episode 295 of the O.D. Anthem podcast, coming to you from the hashtag OTALA Studios, high below the 110 freeway in downtown Los Angeles, California. Thank you for joining us. Yes, thank you so much for listening. The easiest way to listen to this podcast in audio format is anchor.fm forward slash O.D. Anthem. It'll give you links to Apple. It'll give you links to Google. It'll take you to Spotify. It'll take you to Stitcher. It'll take you to Pocket Cast. All of them are covered there. It's an easy way to find the podcast on the app you like to use most. And, of course, you can find more O The Anthem at O The Anthem on Twitter and Instagram. You're watching right now a bootleg version <laughs> live on Facebook.com forward slash O The Anthem. Uh, you can always find all of the videos at YouTube.com forward slash O The Anthem. Yeah, yeah it's just going to be one of those nights. Uh, and... Uh, you can find uh, everything over the anthem related at over the anthem dot com. Yes, uh, yeah. uh, up front, apologies for the uh, the live stream tonight. Yeah, hopefully everything with the YouTube version will be aces. <sighs> um, <laughs> the, Rob has been having such a thing with his uh, with his laptop here recently, and the updates that are so constant. Well, let me just say, <laughs> no one should ever, ever. By an AMD driven laptop. And I say that after, you know, being very happy with my AMD laptop for the last three years. Like it it has I've been defending it. I've been saying, it's oh, it's worked admirably. Forget your MacBook. This AMD Athlon A12 7th Gen computer has been, you know, killer. Uh, I burned out two hard drives. That was on me. That's not on the the laptop. Mm-hmm. Like I'm killing this thing, but it still operates. And then AMD decides they want to do a new update mm, twice a day. At two yeah. o'clock today, I said, "You know what? Let's get ready for this podcast. Uh, we're going to get you into didn't, it." You didn't want to like come here and oh, then no, no. spend all this time trying to get it to work. You wanted to update beforehand so that it was ready to go. Yes, we we have had a uh, a long weekend. We're going to get into that in a minute. But I just said, "You know what? I want to show up. I want to be ready for the show. So I'm going to log on two o'clock. Let's just check. Oh, of course." There's some updates. Mm-hmm. Okay, so let's download those updates and be ready to go. And uh, about an hour ago, we hit go to stream, and it said, oh, hey, updates available. <laughs> I'm like, um, there's no way. So I go to the, the update driver, and yes, there is a second update today. Now, I did the update. We sat through the whole update. Installed. Everything was ready. And then I went back to the... Restarted update. the computer. Yes, I went back to the driver. Oh, so then we tried to stream again, and nothing. So I go back to the driver installer. Oh, well, there's another update. <laughs> I had to do the earlier one in order to get access to the later one, which now I can upload. Which means that maybe there's 15 of them, and I don't know, and I just have to download all of them. Yeah. And I'm not going to do that. Uh, what I'm going to do is throw this piece of shit AMD computer uh, off the balcony and on to the 110. Relax, Stephanie. Uh, <laughs> eh, we're not on the 24th floor. <laughs> it won't kill anybody from up here. I mean, maybe the car accident will, but that's not my fault. <laughs> that's, a, that's how you choose to react to it. Yes. <sighs> but yeah, so uh, here we are uh, yeah, with a green screen behind us. <laughs> you guys see the truth, the ugly truth. Oh, if you're watching on Facebook, you see the ugly truth. If you're watching on YouTube, well... Nothing's in his. <laughs> you don't get the behind the scenes footage. You got a nice opening. You got a whole, a whole uh, everything. But that's another reason why you should join us on Monday evenings, uh, for the live stream. Yeah, you get all the special stuff. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, here's another thing. I, I, I purposefully left work early. Yeah. Ah, uh, motherfuckers. Anyway, so uh, we got a lot to talk about. Yes. Yes. Uh, uh, so let's start at the top. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, mostly, uh, I, I figured we should start off just talking about the Thanksgiving holiday. Yes. Here. Yeah, it is It is the holiday after all. Uh, we stayed in L.A., uh, we being me and Rachel and Roberto <laughs> and Roxy and all them. Everyone and, except me. And yes. Rob went home to Maryland uh, to spend time with family and Maxon. Well, you know, he's Maxon's like, also family. I right? know, but he's like, you know, separated from the rest. Uh, true, just yes. like Carly is family. Yes. But yes. it's just like, I'm going to hang out with everybody and Carly. And Carly as well. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, sure. Yeah, I get you. Yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> it's like, a, you know, like a Aretha Franklin or something like that. Like, you got to put the, the star up front. Oh, OK. Yeah. All right. Um, or not, that's not the one I'm thinking about. about no, no, Franklin. no, no. You're talking about this uh, Diana Ross. And yeah, Supremes. there we go. Yes. Diana Ross. Yeah, that's what I was thinking of. Of course. So, yes. Um, 
But yeah, so you went home. Uh, how I did. was Maryland? Uh, well, so let's start with this. Um, <laughs> I'm not surprised that the computer is not working. Uh, and that is because it has been the most awful seven days I have ever experienced in my life. Do tell. Everything seems to have gone wrong in the last seven days. So let's start at the top. Uh, I was running a bit late, but within reason to get to uh, to get to my flight when a uh, gentleman decided to ram his bike into the side of the car, Mm -hmm. uh, thus stopping, obviously. The trip to the airport. Now, I had 100... A trip to Burbank, too. A trip to Burbank. Beautiful Burbank Airport, you motherfucker. (laughs) By the way, it's going to be an R-rated podcast today. (laughs) Uh, Prepare yourself. I got a lot. I got a lot going on. It's explicit. So, uh, I had $100 in cash in my pocket. And I knew what this guy wanted. He knew what he wanted. Mm -hmm. And I was willing to give it to him. But, little nosy Nelly from up the block saw what happened. And, uh... And Roxy was talking to the gentleman in Spanish. He was a, a, nat- a not a natural, uh, a native Spanish speaker. Mm-hmm. And, of course, she is uh, much better at the Spanish than than I am. Uh, also, pale face, so maybe not the best one. Yeah. Um, so she talked to him, and I was uh, prepared to give him the $100 I had in my pocket when uh, Nosy Nelly called 911. And now we can't leave. Because it's leaving the scene of an accident. And you can't give him the $100. And I certainly can't give him... I mean, I could have, but I'm not feeling generous. I'm, I'm running a business here. I'm buying my <laughs> time to get to the airport. So uh, LAPD, and of course LAPD fashion, uh, 50 minutes later, had not yet responded. Right. Uh, when Nosy Nelly got uh, nosier Nellier uh, to call 911 again, this time in English. First Nosy Nelly didn't speak English, spoke Spanish on the phone. Uh, got a nosier Nelly to call in in Spanish or in English and said something to the effect of he's laying on the ground. Uh, this is super serious. You need to send someone. <laughs> Meanwhile, the gentleman is standing there complaining about his face, looking at me like we can all make this go away. And I'm looking at him like, no, no, this broad has ruined that for you. Yeah. This was going to be a, a hey, why, you know. why is anyone calling the police? That's well, that's the thing that she like, was not even involved. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, <sighs> I will never understand people who are just like, I'll be the one who calls the cops. I'm just like, why? Yeah. <laughs> what good comes from this? Now, look, look, about I mean, week- like, if, it, if it's like, if, if it's something I want the cops there for, I'll call them myself. Oh, yeah. If yeah. I'm driving along, minding my own business, and somebody rear ends me, I will call the cops. I yeah. was like, hey, get somebody out here. I was just rear ended. I need a report. I need a report. I don't care about anything yeah. else, but my insurance is going to require a report. Or, you know, like, I was just robbed. I'll oh. call the cops. That's fine. I'll take care of this, you know? So no, no. Like, I don't need somebody else going, like, I saw the whole thing. I'll call it in. No, don't do it. I'll do it myself. We had a, a homeless gentleman uh, who was on the other side of the freeway fence uh, about two, a week and a half ago. A week ago, a mm-hmm. week and a half. And uh, he was, uh, you know, uh, had some mental in- illness, and he was yelling some derogatory things at the women as they were walking past. Yeah. And every uh, I got, like, messages in, from, like, four four women who work at my office at the same time, like, hey, uh, this guy was doing this. Should I call the cops? And I was instantly like, no, white women, do not call the cops. Yeah. This uh, Hispanic uh, or mixed Hispanic black gentleman who is mentally ill should not be put in contact with the LAPD. Yeah. So then I walk over to the fence and try to calmly talk to him and say, hey, man, listen, I, I get I get it. Yeah, we got some very pretty girls who work here, but uh, I need you to go. Um, and he's just like, uh, well, yeah, listen, if you want me to go, they're going to have to come take me out of here. And I'm like, don't do this to me, man. Like, yeah. I'm I don't want to be the one. person. Yeah, yeah, I'm not the fucking one. I don't want it on my conscience when I have to call LAPD because it's my job to get you the fuck out of here. And they shoot you in front of everybody. Now, I will laugh because I have an inappropriate sense of humor. <laughs> However, everyone else will be fucking ruined and I yeah. won't even get any work done today. And then I'll have your death on my conscience for, uh, you know, about 15 minutes before I forget about it. Um... Anyway, so I don't call the cops. Well, yeah. I actually did call the cops in that case, and then I literally, while I was on the phone with 911, walked over to the fence and had the conversation on the opposite side of the fence from him to give him every every opportunity yeah. to get away, which he did. Well, I mean, if you give him a chance and, and yeah. he doesn't do anything and the cops show up and things happen, then what are you supposed to do? You did everything you could to... Mm. I feel like he gets a lot of empty threats, and I just wanted him to know, like, listen, I, I got to do this, man. It, it's yeah. my job, so I'm doing it. Yeah, you can go if you want, and I'll call him back and say don't worry about it, which I did. Uh, nonetheless... Uh, so I missed that flight uh, because the police showed up, you know, 70 minutes later and then 30 <laughs> minutes of investigation and my flight had taken off. 
So I, cops I, are just like, this seems like bullshit to me. Uh, yes, it absolutely <laughs> is, officer. I tried to buy him off. But Nosy Nelly over here, who, by the way, after her hearing from the cops that, like, oh, you know, there's a, I mean, you know, it's illegal to, to ride your bike on the sidewalk and you're going the opposite way of traffic, which is also illegal. And, you know, you hit the side of the car, which clearly means that, like, they were here and stopped when you ran into them. Now Nosy Nelly, who called the cops, who thought she was going to get her buddy a payday, is slowly wandering up the block. And I got to be like, officer, she's the one who called up there. You're going to don't want to talk to her so <laughs> like no bitch you get the fuck yeah. back here you don't get to leave here until i get to leave here um anyway so uh then uh you know i i got a later flight and i flew across country and uh got the car and went home and you know uh my day lasted well i got, got three hours of sleep woke up at you know 6 30 7 o'clock to go to work 24 hours plus got home at 11 eastern which would have been what like uh, not eight yeah, so, you know, thir- 30 hours or so. 30 yeah. hours or so and three hours of sleep. And um, then I got to uh, watch Maxon because I would promised I would watch him because I had this feeling like, oh, I'll sleep on the plane. I'll be cool. <laughs> but I got... Um, Best laid plans, though. Yeah, I got a dude who took up his seat and half of mine and half of the other guy's seat, which just meant, like, there was going to be no sleep on the way. Yeah. So, uh, good trip. Then I went to come back and uh, missed my flight back. <laughs> Had to, uh, I've never missed a flight in my life. I missed two in the same, ex- and the, the second one also, traffic that was not on Google Maps at all. Uh, the rental car company delayed me 30 minutes to do a paper and an electronic report about a damage to the car that was there when I picked it up. And TSA picked me for special fucking, cl- like they went through my bag and like gave me a touchdown or a pat down. And uh, so then I missed a flight, had to rebook it again. So I sneak outside. I do a live video. You guys can see that on Instagram. It's uh, it's available on my live video there. Uh, and um, then I go back in through security. And then the millimeter detector, you know, the one where you're like, eh. Yeah. Shows a fucking package in, like, it's tucked in the back of my pants. Right, right. And everybody goes, red alert. And now it's, like, <laughs> yanking my bag out of the This is the, the moment machine. that the TSA officers were looking for. They really were. They had I somebody wanna take, here. I want to take down this terrorist yeah but apparently uh it was just uh my shirt ruffled up which makes me question that machine <laughs> in its entirety but yeah finally i got on the plane went to minneapolis because my first layover was supposed to be in atlanta nice and warm and in the south to get back to uh to get to vegas second one was in minneapolis where it's snowing yeah and of a course, lot we got a delay there uh i think my original time to get into vegas was five five thirty i thought five yeah. thirty and i ended up arriving at 8.30, getting to the hotel at 9. But Not luckily, getting a Fat Tuesday until 9.30. Luckily, though, <laughs> Fat Tuesday in hand by 9.30. So that's the goal. Yeah. Um, it was pretty easy going here. There was a good group of people. We had some fun. Uh, yeah, not much missed. The I, I will say this, though. Um, the, the first opportunity to drive the EV mm-hmm. to Vegas and back... Which is all uh, I've been using the rain the, the the range of my car is about like two hundred and ninety miles or so, and Vegas is about two sixty. Yeah. So I've sort of been saying like I have enough range to get to Vegas. Which isn't is entirely true? true. Yeah, it's not not true, but it's also not true. Right. Um we were fully char uh, so uh just to give people an idea in case they're thinking about buying an EV and they're sort of like wondering about this part of the thing. Like yeah. if you're going on a longer trip, uh, I got to Vegas with one stop, a 20 minute or so charge mm-hmm. on a fast charger. And that got me the whole way. Yeah. When we were coming back, we were carrying a little bit of extra weight. Uh, and we had to stop. <laughs> I'm not trying to do it like a. I mean, that was a bit of a fat uh, joke. I understand. I'm not, I'm not yeah. trying to say you're some fatty fat fat. I'm just saying that you're. <laughs> to be fair, you're more weight than there was when there was no passengers in the car. I'm also. Uh, I also had a bag that weighs about half as much as me. So <laughs> like you know, uh, they don't weigh those carry ons. That's a yeah. good thing. I, you can pack it tight. Um, but yeah, I had probably like carrying a, around your Anvil collection. I had like a 50 or 60 pound bag, probably. Like, uh, I was trying to be cool, and every time I thought an airport employee was watching me, I'd like lift it and be like, "Yeah, no, it's cool." But it was so <laughs> goddamn heavy. Um, uh, yeah. So yeah, on the way back, we had to make a second stop. Yeah. Uh, and to be precautionary, fair, we, we might have been able to make it. Yeah. But it was one of those things like you don't want to be a mile away and let's just let's just stop for 10 minutes and yeah but uh 
the total cost for me mm. uh was like twenty one dollars in electricity on the road because the fast chargers are a little bit more expensive. Yeah. But worth it though. Twenty uh, twenty one dollars as opposed to if you had to fill up your tank twice to make it to Vegas and back, which is like for Rachel that's like a forty five fifty dollar. Yeah. And and for those of you for in, each fill up, so those of you on the East Coast who are thinking like uh, two twenty a gallon, I don't know, no, no, no. it's uh, <laughs> it's five dollars a gallon yeah. right now here. Um, there was a point where we passed a gas station that had the price of one gallon for what I had paid for the entire trip up until that point. Yeah, yeah, and I was just like, this feels good. It's, it's a good feeling. And I mean, like the stops are, you know, I I, I wish that I could just stop anywhere. That mm-hmm. would be nicer. Uh, but uh, they were both fine. Uh, you know, we stopped at like a, a little country store in Baker yes. and, and stretch place, our legs and like. I want to go back there because yeah. this weird place in the middle of nowhere where the world's large or tallest thermometer is mm-hmm. has root beers from all over the world. And I made myself a five pack of root beer, threw in a cheer wine, which if you guys don't know what that is, like it's just a bunch of amazing drinks. And uh, I realized one of the ones I grabbed, you remember Judge Wapner? Yeah. From the People's Court? Yeah. He's got a root beer named after him. And I got one. What so is it? It's it's just a root beer company from New York that hmm. made a, a Wapner's Choice. And oh. it's root beer. And I'm wondering if they like actually pay him for it or if uh, they're just like using the name. But either way, I feel I like it would work it. better with a regular beer because then maybe you could call it Wapner Hopner. <sighs> One of us is a marketing genius. The other <laughs> struggles. Uh, no, but I, but the second stop was uh, at a Walmart. Yeah. And I was thinking, like, if we had to make two stops on the way oh, to Vegas, where I got the coldest chill oh ever. My my, like, I literally walked around to like I wasn't expecting to get hit with like <laughs> <laughs> penetrated by the iciness around. So. Uh, I think we've told the story before about us going to San Antonio Winery <laughs> and, and uh, Corey <laughs> shouting like, "Hold on to your butts!" Like, <laughs> we hit a hitting a speed we, bump. It wasn't a speed bump. It was just like a pothole, or not like a pothole. Was, yeah, it was the train tracks. Uh, yeah, like and it comes out of comes out of nowhere. <laughs> but there's enough time for Corey to be like, "Hold on to your butts!" And then be like, uh, "But then." The, twice in this trip, yeah. <laughs> it was, we hit that speed bump right after we left uh, the casino, and yeah. it was like a ee <laughs> noise that was made. It was like running over a curb stopper. Like it really felt like you were like, because you know, like <laughs> this is the same thing I had with like the speed bumps that used to be in my parents' neighborhood. Oh, those were the worst. The, when they first yeah. put them in, though, they were like the biggest speed bumps ever, and yeah. I had the Eclipse at the time. And I would have to drive up them sideways, yeah, angle it up and, and over, and like it literally just crawl over top of the speed bumps to like uh. get through. And I remember once I went to the uh, the country clubs right there. The country club is the reason why there's speed bumps. There. Yes, yeah, yeah. None of the people who live in this area were asking for those. So I went in. I was just like, "Where's the manager or something like that?" And I'm just like, "Dude, you have to fix that speed bump situation out there." And it's just like, "I don't know what you're talking about." The county decided to put those speed bumps up. I'm like. Dude, people can't even drive over them. Yeah. That so thing is high. 14 inches tall. There is no reason. <laughs> it's like an extension of the border wall or something like that. It's yeah. so tall. Like, what are you doing? Like, this isn't a speed bump. And that was what we hit outside. And MGM apparently went to the same builder because... <laughs> also, by the way... Get your three and a half foot tall speed bumps here. No stripe, no color change, yeah. just black. So you're just driving and all of a sudden it's like... Whoa, whomp, and you're like, oh, whoa, whoa, okay, speed bumps. All right, we gotta, gotta chill out. I but, do like when when you go to Vegas, like everything's so clean and perfect. I mean, like in the sense of like everything is designed to be like take you from one casino yeah. to the next. And there's a bridge that yeah, like it, it it it's it's very theme park like as yes. opposed to like uh, the architecture of like a New York or something like that where it's individual buildings that were all like it's IKEA. It guides you to the next. Yeah, thing. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. it's like it's it's like an amusement park and IKEA all mixed up into one. Uh, but the the part that really sort of uh, bothers me about vegas is like as soon as you're not on the strip anymore it's like <laughs> it gets bad <laughs> yeah it's bad fast you're like in baker <laughs> yeah yeah it's like, oh but uh, yeah speaking of the uh, no it wasn't big it was the second stop but yeah uh that e sound that uh we made when we hit the speed bump was only beaten by the strangely girlish like shout cover I, I don't know even how to describe it that came when the uh, wind blew against the car and then i hear Corey outside like Ooh. 
<laughs> it literally. <laughs> have you ever like? Uh, has anyone like ever like dropped a ice cube down your shirt and you like get that like <sighs> like feeling? Yeah, I run hot, so I just go ah, and the steam <laughs> rises up the back, and I'm like, thanks, that was refreshing. Well, usually when people drop an ice cube down your back, like you yeah. get that like, whoo, like I wasn't yeah. expecting it on my spine kind of thing. You get that spine tingle. And that noise would have been totally normal. Like, yeah. whoo. But what I when, <laughs> no, what came like, out of your mouth was, <laughs> what came out of your mouth was more like a um, uh, your grandmother accidentally well, walking the, the, in on you, taking your shirt off, which is like not inappropriate, but like the, pro oh, oh, oh. the problem was that it wasn't just like the feeling of like the ice cube dropping. It was like. Multiple ice cubes getting stuck, so it was like the the uh, the feeling of the ice cube drop, but like across the entire spine all at the same time. Yeah. yeah. So it's like you know, like yes, I would if I got shot once, I'd be like ah. Oh. If I got shot eight times, I'd be like ah. I. I. But. I love that noise. <laughs> Uh, so my original point though here was that uh, those are two really good stops. One, yeah. the root beer stop because I'm gonna stop. I want to stop there every time now just to get six different root beers mm. or five different root beers and a cheer wine. But also, if you we're can going spend twenty minutes deliberating on it while I'm charging up the car, eh, you know, just say like, I'm walking around like, what have I not had? What do you got? What do you got new in here, buddy? And then right when I go to pay, do you have any recommendations? Yeah, and we can have a nice ten minute conversation, and then I finally choose <laughs> choose six and go to pay, and you fucking disappear and go wherever. <laughs> Uh, and then I got to ring a bell to get you back there. I, Not me, the guy who works there. Yeah, I, I literally, he was watching me pick out taffy and sodas. And I'm like, all right, good to go. And I turn around and he's gone. And I'm like, what? really? I wonder if he was just like, these guys aren't going to steal anything. I think I think that was it. He was like looking at me like, he's not the one. He's not the one. He's looking through the root beers. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> what do I have to worry about? Um, oh, but uh, my point is the second stop at a Walmart, either way you go, it's like, well, if it was not you know, four o'clock, five o'clock in the morning. Um, on the way to Vegas, you're like, all right, let's stop, grab some snacks. Let's grab like, uh, oh, I forgot my toothbrush, forgot my deodorant. Great. Mm. Let's stop. We'll charge a car a bit, hit up the Walmart, in and out in a half hour, get its ass charged up, and then we're off again. Yeah. Um, just don't do it at five o'clock in the morning because it was desolate and the police lights made me think I was in Baltimore. And cold. Oh, and it was cold. Yeah. 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 Uh, real quick, yeah. before we, we get out of this whole thing. Oh, uh, sorry. One more thing. Yes. Um, I'm always, uh, this, the pictures from Thanksgiving or the Friendsgiving here also reminded me that when the revolution comes, I will be conscripting Rachel because <laughs> I will tell her at every meal, we're going to have four people over and she will feed enough for the entire battalion <laughs> when they drop in the, there was a boomerang where there was not enough time for her to scroll all of the food and it had to be followed up by a second boomerang yeah. for the rest of the food. And I'm like, there's like six people there. How many people is she trying to feed? But uh, like, well, she, the plan originally was like there was going to be like eight or something like that. And then some people didn't show up. And like it, her plan also involves I want leftovers for the next couple of days. Yeah. So I get it. Like she she's she'd rather overcook than 100 percent. And I, I do the same thing too, because she was she was just like, go pick up a twelve pound turkey, and I'm just like, well, there's this fourteen one right here. Like, yeah. why am I looking around for a twelve when there's a fourteen right in front of my face? Mm, a couple of days of sandwiches, I'm yeah, good, you know. But it's just like I, I, she didn't wake up like unnaturally early either. Like it was at a you know relatively normal time. I yeah, think. yeah. And then she was a, a, a little bit later than she wanted to because she was angry. <laughs> she was what? She was angry at me because I let her sleep on the couch. <laughs> and she's just like, I wanted to clean last night. Now I have to clean this morning. And I'm waking up late. And I'm just like, Maybe oh. a little, little more cleaning, a little less wine. Uh, and that won't happen. Um, but no, I, was, I I saw the feast and I'm like, you know what? I knew. I I, uh, I got a little taste of my Everyman movie review <laughs> version of The Irishman when I saw Rachel asleep within like 45 seconds. <laughs> she uh, saw, saw him driving in a car and she's just like, I'm going to check out. <laughs> But no, I meant this as a compliment that I know I could like be on the run from the cop, oh, be on the run from the cops, show up at the door and be like, Rachel, I have 14 people here who haven't eaten weeks. Do you have anything? And she's like, ah, yeah, I don't know. Let me go take a look. And then like 40 minutes later, it's just like boomerang. Wait, wait, I got to get a second one in boomerang. And everybody eats and then there's leftovers. And uh, then the cops break the door down and we have to jump off the balcony. That's my fantasy. I don't know. That's parkour. Just for me. Yeah, uh, but we got to talk about actual Vegas, though. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so real quick, 
uh, first of all, just the Ravens in general because yes. we got a chance to watch them there. I didn't get a chance to put any bets down on any football games, and that made me upset because I picked a lot of winners in my head uh, that didn't get a chance to. I was going to put money on that Bengals game. Yeah. Uh, but say la vie. Um, the Ravens look incredible again, even in like an ugly, cold, rainy game. Rainy. Yeah. <laughs> In which uh, Jimmy G wasn't looking spectacular with the throws, like he was making it I mean, happen. Neither, neither was Lamar. Yeah. I, I, I think that we could, we could probably say that twenty percent of the throws that both quarterbacks attempted were not under ideal circumstance right. and probably were off target because of that. The difference, though, is if Lamar drops it and runs, he looks. Uh, I, a great a thing I saw on Twitter is like, uh, stop comparing Lamar to Michael Vick. Lamar is essentially Barry Sanders who can throw a football. Yeah. Like that, that is well, his better example. Here's something I was thinking about earlier. Uh, you know, like uh, in the, the in medieval times, they used to like, like uh, when they were trying to get people inside of a place, they would uh, like sort of come up from the roof. And like tear open the roof, like just battering ram through the roof oh, kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, yeah. And then pour like hot liquid in on the people like below. A lead, like lead. Yeah. yeah. Uh there there's like an aspect of the Ravens offense that sort of feels like this. Like we have the running backs like Mark Ingram and Gus Edwards who are just battering rams, just like blowing holes through. Mm -hmm. And then every once in a while Lamar Jackson comes along and he's like the flood. <laughs> because he just finds whatever hole they're giving him. And just works his way through. Yeah. There's no, like, it, it's it's amazing to me to watch how he can just find any hole. And, like, it's things that, like, I don't even see coming. He just has an uh, exceptional vision. And, and watching what's on going TV on the is crazy because you see, like, flooded jerseys. Yeah. And then, boop, purple jersey comes out, or black jersey in this case, comes out the other side. And he's like, how, how did that even happen? And then they show the replay and you're like... They had him dead to rights, hundred percent. I don't know what happened in that like two milliseconds that we like crossed in front and we didn't get to see it, but he like head faked everybody and everybody just fell down and then he kept running. The other the other thing I don't get is that uh, I mean th this is a common thing about people watching games and like having their own opinions of like when coaches should be taking timeouts and stuff like that. But like watching this game yesterday, I kept saying to myself like. Why is Shanahan working through all his timeouts right now? Yeah. You gave the Ravens the ball with six minutes left. You're not getting it back. Like, this is like, I kept seeing like how this game was going to go yeah. and it was going to happen. I was like, they're just going to keep running the ball. They're just going to keep pushing down the field. They're just going to keep for getting first downs. They're going to hold this thing for six minutes and Tucker's going to kick it. You and, know? and that's what happened. That's exactly <laughs> like, what happened. And you had no timeouts to stop him at any point along the, the process. I just uh, like, it's boring in the sense that, like, you know, running the ball and like waiting for the clock to get all the way down to one yeah. and then running the ball again doesn't seem like it would be fun, but this is such a fun team. You know what to I realized? Watch. What? This is what Patriots fans have felt like for like the last 10, 15 years. No. Yeah, no, that kind of setup where you're just like, all right, so you just gave Tom Brady the ball with six minutes left. He's just going to grind you to death for the next six minutes and then, you know, a little flip to Gronkowski and score and win the game. That You have done your own disservice. No, because I, I, I think that when you're talking about Patriots football, it's more about the Bill Belichick has has come up with some sort of plan to like get you out of your out of okay. your plan. You know, like I mean, usually it's like it, forty two to zero. If somebody and, if somebody had burned through all their timeouts with six minutes left and the Patriots had the ball, I would say I wouldn't say like, oh, I guarantee the Patriots are going to hold on to this ball for all six minutes of the the remainder of the game. But I would say Belichick is going to find a way to make this draw out as long as humanly possible. See, I know like I would, he'll go, he'll go three downs and punt if he has to, but he's going to just drag this out for as long as he possibly can. Or Tom's whereas, again. whereas like at, at 10, 10 yards and four plays is just not, not something that I, I worry about with the Ravens yeah. offense. Like they're going to get there. It's just, so, or uh, Tom Brady is like, you know what? I bet I could score three times. I got six minutes. They got no timeouts. It's one of those things. It's one of those things too, where it's like, you know, it's fourth and four, and the Ravens are like, let's go for it. Where like the Patriots would never. No, I, that's also true. Yeah, they, they would just be like, it's fourth and four, and he's just like, all right, wait until there's one second left, call timeout, and then we can kick it away, start the play, and yeah. we get another couple seconds, and then punt it. Yep. Like uh, it just. Uh, By the way, fourth and four on the, the like drive to end the game where it's tied. Mm -hmm. And you're like on your side of the field or on their side of the field, but not by much. And like, 
you're going to give him pretty decent field position if you turn it over here. But just all confidence, like, yeah, let's go. It's amazing to me that the NFL can do some things to make parts of the game more exciting and do things that ruin – like, they, they can get something so right and then something so wrong. Yeah. Like, onside kicks here recently, now that people have, like, figured out the right way to, like, boomerang the ball. Yeah. Have become, like, so exciting. And, you know, fourth downs this year have been so exciting because, like, so many more teams are going for it. Yep. They, they're, they like, just look at the math and they're like, you know, there's a 30% chance we make this play and we get the ball for another few yeah. minutes. It's worth the gamble. Especially with a team that you feel like confident about. Yeah, the the uh, onside kick, especially I though I think like being down two scores with three or four minutes left. Yeah, but like watching Koo like, uh, do two of them in the same game oh. for the uh, Falcons wasn't was that they were the ones that were down on Thursday, right? Yeah, I can't yeah, remember. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, that that was that was incredible to watch, and and you know the Ravens on fourth down, but then at the same time like the pass interference thing is just like I I it, it feels like when cops have some sort of shooting and they go in front of the police di- dis- uh, disciplinary board, like calling New York on a, on a flag for a, or a challenge for a pass interference is just like, Nope. Good shooting. Yeah. I don't see, I don't see where the, where the ref went wrong here. I mean, literally it's just like, what was the call yeah. on a field? Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. No, yeah, that's trust right guys. <laughs> yeah. uh, like, okay. All right. Like, in, you know, the, the, uh, against the, <coughs> who was their last home game there? Shit forgetting um last week? not the not the patriots not the rams what was the one before that but we did play the patriots at home we did play the patriots at home uh-huh. it was the sunday night was it the texans mm, that was Whatever. a while before there, there was a yeah. game there was a game where there was a clear pass interference from a ravens player and they threw the challenge flag and they didn't overturn it yeah. even though i've never seen a more textbook definition of pass interference but i don't want this i don't I, if the Ravens commit a penalty, I want them to be called for it. Yeah. Because I don't want somebody coming up to me after the fact going like, well, you know, if they called that pass interference in the first quarter when the game was still competitive, then this yeah. whole thing could have changed. I'm just like, I don't want to live with that. Like, Well, and that's the thing, too, is like last week, apparently, there there was a 50 percent uh, like overturning rate. Mm-hmm. And uh, one of the, uh, like a, a story within a tweet, because I, I don't think I read the entire story. I might have read like the first few paragraphs was that. Uh, that maybe the the refs are getting a little too big for their britches, and New York like smacked them down one week, but then this week it was right back up to like ninety five percent confirmed. Yeah. Like so, it's like all right, listen, that was clearly pass interference. You clearly should have called it. You got together, still didn't call it. So now we're gonna have to say, listen, we can't. I mean, there've been there've been calls that were that were held up that were worse than the one mm. that happened in the NFC championship game, which started this whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. Like the reason why we put the call in was because, uh, Roby Coleman basically just tackled somebody open field before the ball even got to them. <laughs> yeah. And there was no pass interference call. And I've seen plays that have been just as blatantly, like clearly pass interference that were not called on the field that were brought to New York and confirmed. So, I mean, like w- would we have felt better about the situation if there was, the challenge system last year in the NFC title game and McVay threw a, or, uh, uh, yeah, McVay. Peyton. Oh, no, Peyton. Yeah. Peyton threw the challenge flag. He's like, I want you to look at this. And they said, no, nope, no, no pass interference. Would that make you feel better? I mean, like, I think just, it makes you feel only slightly better. You would better say, you would you say to yourself, it. like at the moment you would be like, oh, they're going to fix this. They're going to look at the, yeah. the video and they're going to get it right. And then if they don't overturn it, what are you going to say? Like, oh, well, like, <laughs> They looked at it. <laughs> well, I think <coughs> Gene Autry, I think, is a guy who they have on Fox, who's like the Gene in the Senator. Gene Senator, the, the in the booth, yeah, ref guy. He does a really good job of explaining. And again, you're if you're in the game, you don't really hear that, obviously. But he does a good job of being like, well, here's the thing. Rule thirty seven one two nine B says da 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 da, and yeah. that's why this particular situation isn't pass interference. And then they come back and they're like, ruling on the field is confirmed, not pass interference. And you're like. Oh, well, I mean, okay. So he just explained to me why it's not. I can live with that. The problem, though, is if you're at the game, no, of course not. You're not there was, you're not there was that, once so. where I saw, like, a sideline video of Belichick, like, yelling at a referee. <laughs> and he, like, the problem with the rule book in the NFL now is that it's so amazingly dense. Yeah. That there's, like, it, there's no way to, like, it, it doesn't feel as natural as what is like you you can't just look at a play and say like what is holding what is pass interference because there's there's various ways of looking at it but like i remember belichick like bringing up some sort of discrepancy about how two rules were like called 
differently. Mm-hmm. He's just like, what the fuck's going on here? And like the ref looks at him and he's just like, listen, I don't make the rules. I'm just trying to enforce it. You're looking at me like I, I'm in charge of like why these things don't line up, but I, that's not my job. Yeah. He's like, well, the you're the one. You're the one in front of me. <laughs> well, it's like uh, there was a the tripping call in the Ravens game yeah. where there was a chop. Like it wasn't a chop block. It was a low block. Uh, but the uh, I don't remember. Was it Ingram? I can't remember. But his arm was like flopped out and caught yeah. the shoe top. And it's like, oh well, that's clearly a trip. Like, no, it's you know maybe a low block. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway. It's not. It's nice though that uh, the Ravens have been. Bringing us such joy the last couple of weeks. Yes, and uh, I'm I, every weekend I, I I find myself with a renewed sense of happiness, and I look forward to each and every game. And we got another tough one coming up here with the Bills. Yep, uh, Josh in Allen. Buffalo, I believe. Yeah, Josh Allen versus Lamar. I mean, yeah. I, I'm liking these young quarterback matchups. Uh, it's going to be what we see for the next ten years. So it's going to be good. Mm-hmm. Um, two things. Uh, damn, I forgot what the first one was. Um, something about. Lamar MVP. I mean, yes. Do you think he's an MVP caliber? Yeah, I mean, I I, I don't see why. It, no, no reasonable definition of MVP is eluding him at this moment. Yeah, he's the most important player on a team that's winning. Uh, he's the reason why this team is winning. Mm-hmm. If Lamar was, if it was Joe Flacco again this year, the Ravens would not be as good yeah. as they are with Lamar Jackson. They might be a 500 team with Flacco, and they're uh, one of the best teams in the NFL with Lamar. Like, it's just a clear – to me, there's no – like, the idea of, like, you know, like, well, Alex Rodriguez was the most important p- player in Major League Baseball. It's like, yeah, yeah well, he's on a last-place team. It's like, eh, well, <laughs> like, well, I, I, there's no – there's no re- I don't see how you can make an argument for someone else unless you're doing a, like uh, – Russell Wilson is literally doing this all by himself. Like, yeah. you know, the Ravens would be a good team without Lamar – they wouldn't maybe be as good, you know, they wouldn't be a, as a, good. And they wouldn't be as good, but, you know, they'd be a playoff team. They'd still be ahead of the Steelers. But, you know, like the only reason why the Seahawks are winning is because of Russell Wilson. And yeah. If it wasn't for him, then. Well, and I, we, one of the podcasts we listened to on the ride back where uh, I think it was Bill Simmons, but it might not have been, said something along the lines of like the biggest, uh, the biggest plays for a lot of these teams this year are going to be the plays that Lamar makes against them. Like mm. the Patriots season will be determined by five or six plays that Lamar has in those games. The Chiefs season may end up being ended or continuing based on five or six plays that Lamar has again. And like that's what I consider as MVP. Your season is based on how I perform. Yeah. That is and obviously that you are the center of your team and that your team is thriving based on that stuff. But um so the other thing was uh bright spot, uh, because we are now 110 days away from Baseball starting, mm-hmm. and the Orioles oh, are... I forgot to put in my Orioles World Series bed. Yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I got to say, it's got to be like 10,000 to 1 at this point. Like, they wouldn't even take the bet just because it's so dangerous for them to be like, listen... Uh, if for whatever reason it doesn't happen, then we're bankrupt. Yes, yeah. If, <laughs> Literally if, if, own MGM. If, if he <laughs> hits, it's at 14 billion to 1, and he's trying to put $100 down. This is going to be a problem. We don't have the money. Um but you know, it's, it's going to be another down, terrible just year. Like, Would you be interested in owning James Bond? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Uh, I like the casino. Uh, I'd like to just move in. Could we get the tables out of here? Uh, and then it's, oh, it's Baker Mayfield's commercials where it's just you walking <laughs> around MGM living. eating some, <laughs> eating some <laughs> Captain Crunch while I'm walking. <laughs> Vacuuming in the yeah. high roller suite. It's like, yeah, this seems fine. Oh, something I just thought of, though, uh, which is on the list, and I wanted to mention it. Uh, we also got a lot of writing done. Yeah, this weekend, which was the point. There, it sounds like we had a lot of fun, which we did, but also uh, finished the entire first act of a screenplay. Mm-hmm. First thing I've seriously written in six months at least. Felt so good. Yes, uh, oh, I would. I would sad. like to say one last thing, just real quick before yeah. we get out, because we're running real late on this. Yeah. Um, I am a I am a frequent visitor of uh, Las Vegas. So uh, for the people out there who don't go as frequently as I, uh, I I would like to say this. I think the value in going to Vegas right now is off strip. Yeah. And uh, normally I wouldn't say stay off strip and try and like, you know, like go, you know, like walk on or something like that. But not only are the rooms cheaper, which is nice, but it's there's just seemed to be like this 
Vegas isn't a, like a weird influx place where the people who are making money feel like they can just do it at the backs of people who come to visit. Yeah, money. like yeah. I mean, like it just feel, feels like you used to be able to like light a fire in your hotel room. <laughs> yeah, and Vegas would be happy to have you come back. Uh, nowadays, it's like, oh, you want access to, you know, the conference room for. <laughs> Uh, phone call that'll be seven hundred dollars and it's like that doesn't make it. Like, yeah I, every little thing is like i used to be able to like eat like a king in vegas for 20 bucks i would I, go to a buffet yeah like you you you'd be stuffed it would all be delicious it cost 15 dollars, and it would it, you would go on happy uh that those days are just gone in vegas yeah. that's been gone for a while but i think that the big corporate moneyed interest in Vegas is getting too big for its own good. Yeah. And the value and the ability to sort of get more bang for your buck if you're looking for enjoyment in Vegas and not feeling like a human ATM. Yeah. It's like go a little bit off strip. I, I might even say. say like a circus circus, which is still on strip, but like far enough Further away down. from the yeah. The mainness of the strip that Maybe like even it, Luxor or like Excalibur where it's like, hey, we're still on the strip. Yeah, I mean those are like oh yeah, those are Caesar's properties, oh, that's and I right. still think yeah, no fuck or MGM, uh, you know, like they're it, it's all Caesar's or MGM right now. Not uh, oh yo. Yeah, well, you know, it, we it, should try it out next time. I I I just I, it feels to me like it, you, we spend so much time walking around anyway. What's what's the difference of walking five minutes of the strip? Yeah, I'm 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 with you on that. Yeah, uh, and I'll say I I don't want to shit too much. Uh, it's like freer point. parking, you know, like you get free parking off strip. You, yeah. Don't have to worry about like any, you know, uh, there's a balcony that you can have in Oyo. Yeah. The formerly of Hooters uh, yes. that you know, it, it, there's nothing wrong with those rooms. Like Yeah. And, and it's a perfectly nice. room. And I bet you over the next few months they're going to renovate some of the mm. older spaces and uh, it'll be nice. I just hope they have two for five margaritas in the, in the bar. Still. <laughs> uh, but and I, I want to say it does a little bit on this. I don't want to shit on Paris too much. We stayed at Paris this time. It's the first time at Paris. Lovely hotel. Um I the stay was adequate. Yeah. And uh, I think it was good. However, uh, Corey called down and said, hey, we're here writing and there's two of us. Could we get another desk? And the guy was just like, oh, well, we don't really have anybody to bring it to you. Like, OK, well, can I go get it and yeah. bring it up here? And then you it'll just be here and you guys can take it down when you. Clean when I room. said desk, but then I also clarified, like, I will take like a end table or something like anything. I can just put a laptop on. Yeah. Uh, and it's just like, well, we don't have it. And I'm like, uh, I know you got a room full of fucking furniture somewhere. <laughs> you, you know, know? like it, if, if housekeeping comes in and the desk is in shambles, there's another desk that you have somewhere in the property yeah. to bring up and replace it with. You know, like you would charge us, obviously, for the broken desk. Right. But I'm saying like the, the somewhere is a, a room full of furniture that you have ready to go. Like yeah. it's not you don't have to special order it from Japan or something and like that. We, there was a fifty five dollar resort fee, forty five dollars. Fifty. Fee? Yeah. Fifty five dollar resort fee uh, per person, which, get, which got us. Internet access for two machines. Yeah. So by that count, by the way, not two per two. So laptop, and it, laptop. It, it, it is just per per room, not per person. Yeah. yeah. So, but there was two resort fees, right? No. Oh, is it just one resort fee? Well, two days worth of resort. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, <laughs> so but two computers though. Uh, so that's it. We couldn't put our phones on on the Wi-Fi. Just right. computers. Uh, couldn't get the desk. Um. The first time I've ever been to Vegas and not heard I mean, the person at checkout be like, "How was your stay?" Yeah, like, inquiring and trying well, to get more information. And that's the other thing, like you know, like I was calling up hotels because I mean, part of this, you know, like I I, I want to when I'm writing, I would like to be able to just sit there and not have to worry about like any kind of impulse that I might have. Yeah. Which in this case is I want to just be able to write and smoke at the same time. Yeah. I want to be in a room. I want to just like. Oh, I, I need a cigarette right now, but I want to I don't want to stop writing. I can just light one and keep going. Yeah. And it's not it's so not gonna interfere. Uh, you don't give yourself the excuse to walk away down to the casino. Yeah, like, oh uh, you yeah. know, well, I've been writing for thirty minutes, I might as well go get a cigarette. You know, like yeah. uh it, that was important to me. Uh there's not a lot of places you can smoke on the strip anymore. Dwindling which is surprising. Dwindling. Um The Wild but West. Then, you can buy weed on the street. That that's uh, fucking crazy. They 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 just have like mobile dispensaries like on the sidewalk. Yeah. I think about all the people who are in jail right now. Like, <laughs> they didn't have a Thanksgiving, but there's some guy in Vegas who sells weed on the sidewalk. Also, like, don't fucking smoke in your hotel room. Don't you dare. But you can go buy some weed if you want on the street. <laughs> like, 
Okay. All right, man. All <laughs> it's right. so confusing. Yeah. And like the other thing, like I called up uh, one place, like uh, I think it was Planet Hollywood. I was just like, hey, I saw you have EV parking. And they're like, yes. And then I was like, oh, uh, so what do I do about that? And they're like, well, you have to go through the valet. And I'm like, okay, but I don't want the valet. I just want the EV parking. Yeah. And they're just like, well, you have to go through the valet. I'm just like, all right. So if I was staying as a guest with a regular car, it would be free parking for the whole time I was there. Or I have to pay $25 a day for the valet, of which they're not like doing anything other than bringing me to the charging area. Which I would rather be doing myself. Yeah. Like, and by the way, there's no guarantee that they're going to let your car charge all the way. Yeah. It's like, whoever's here, uh, plug them in, and we'll move them around. So. Yeah. So, uh, you know, like, it, it's just like... Old Vegas is over, man. Although, it, Old Vegas is like probably going to be our spot. Yeah. It, I, I'd be interested in going back down to Old Town Vegas and just sort of seeing what's... Like, in the Fremont area. Yeah. But, I mean, like, God, it's it's... It's such a weird time in Vegas. Like, it's hard to, like, put your finger on it if you're not there, like, all the time. Yep. And if you haven't been to Vegas in like a decade, then you're going to go there and feel like it's weird. It feels like Disney. It just feels like everywhere you turn, there's like, oh, churros are fifteen dollars. And you're just like, well, that doesn't make any fucking sense. Yeah. <laughs> like, where did that come from? Like, uh, you know, like it used to be able to if you were sitting there at a slot machine, you used to be able to be fed and, you know, no, like, not fed. Well, they bring they, they'll bring Peanuts? you drinks. But, you know, like, yeah, yeah if you said peanuts Vegas. or something, they bring yeah. you something. They they have little snacks that they if you wanted it. Yeah. Anything to not get you up off that seat. Right. Like, they would bring it to you in some way or another. They bring you a glass to pee in if you really wanted to stay. <laughs> They'll bring a massage to you if you're feeling a little achy from too much slot machines. Like I mean, they do still have that. Yeah. But you pay for it. Right. Yeah. It, it, it's uh, it's it's not how it used to be. Yeah. That's for sure. All right. Let's let's uh, run through news a little bit. Okay. Here, yes. Because we're running so late. Very very late. We just ran through all of the uh, all of the news time. That was the alarm. Was the news time? Uh, <laughs> all right. So, uh, Starbucks. Yes. Uh, if you guys have seen this story, uh, some police who, fr- uh, and by the way, I forgot this when we were in our pre-show discussion. Not the guy who got the coffee, but another officer at his police station mm-hmm. saw that the cup that he had in his hand said "pig" on it. So he tweeted out the picture and said, "Like you know." We're here working on Thanksgiving, and the hardworking officers are putting themselves in the line of fire, and yeah. this is the thanks we get from our local Starbucks. Um, not knowing that anyone who uses Starbucks on a regular basis knows that when you go in and ask for the drink, they will write in handwriting your name and what you want on the side. Now, when you do a mobile order, it gets printed out and slapped on the, on the cup. This was printed out and slapped on the cup, which means that... Uh, the officer has his name saved on the mobile app as Pig, and that is how it ended up on the cup. Yeah. Now, what he did, and which is uh, apparently coming out now, uh, it's a right wing thing that they're starting to do, which is you get it on the mobile app so you can put like some name on it that you want, but yeah. then you go in and pay at the register so that it comes up as cafe on the receipt because that makes it look like you got it at the restaurant. Yeah, but you didn't. You ordered it online. There was one a few weeks ago about like a uh, uh, diabetes. Here I come, and they kept the sleeve on the cup, and that was weird. Well, the reason they did that is because the girl who worked at Starbucks had written, uh, "My sister has diabetes, and I don't think this is funny." They used the sleeve to cover up the fact that the Starbucks employee said, "I don't think your name is a good joke." Yeah, and the person who did it was trying to say. They're making fun of me for being overweight uh, because I had this very sweet drink and diabetes here. I con- like victim fucking complex. Yeah, but I mean, that, uh, <laughs> it's a controversy I, that's not one. Yeah, I, you know, it, it, like anybody who who sort of feigns outrage over some little <laughs> indiscretion that happens to them. Yeah, like, uh, and this one feels very. Nothing about this story seemed right when I heard it. So. Take that for what it's worth. I'd be I, interested in seeing. From the very beginning, I'm like, there, there's something up here. This is not all of it. I would like to see the forensics on this. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> I'd like to see the any order that I ever took at any of the rest, you know, at, at Nelson's or something like that. Like, I could tell you exactly where it started, exactly who rung it up, yeah. whether it was cash, if there was change, you know, like when it got sent to the kitchen, mm-hmm. you know, like all these things I know. And like, I could, I can. Tell if somebody placed an online order or something like that, what name they put in, you know, and I, I, I just wouldn't. The problem is that like a lot of these places don't like 
have you know they they want to to please the customer so much that it's not worth it for the employees to yeah cause you know like if it had like some sort of racial epitaph on it like you know the the employees can't be like well I'm not making this drink it's like yeah. it came through it's, yeah, you got to do what you got to do yeah uh, but I I do like that uh, also but when that guy later says like you know like how dare Starbucks put yeah. darky on my cup like. <laughs> That's what you said. Just, your name that's was, what the, yeah. That's what you put in the app. Like, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> so you could have a, a, an Instagram story like you're like, oh, I can't believe what just happened. Like, and the thing is, as soon as I saw the follow up tweet that was like, you know, uh, the next day, it went super viral. It started showing up on the news, and uh, then that guy followed up with like, you know, we really just want to get back to work, protecting our community, yeah. and this is such a distraction. I'm like, okay, so you faked this whole fucking thing. Yeah, okay, yeah. Gotcha. Cool. Now at least we know. Um, Somebody who's not faking it, uh, and by it, I mean being a good candidate for president. Uh, Joe Biden. Yeah. Uh, we've been saying for the last, I don't know, always, uh, that Joe Biden is going to do something to fuck up this campaign. Um, and this isn't going to be it, because I think the impeachment is just everybody's got all eyes on impeachment. Uh, but uh, a congresswoman, I think, from Montana or Iowa, wherever he was, gestured generally in his direction while introducing him and he bit her finger which is slightly less creepy than the like uncle joe like up over the shoulders yeah, yeah. thing that he was doing which he stopped so good for you joe on on learning some control self control on that but like i it's something i feel like i should have to tell maxin don't put other people's fingers in your mouth um i don't think i should have to tell joe biden not to put other people's fingers in his mouth and and especially without asking, you know, or with like some sort of consent. <laughs> yeah, like oh, this is just a joke we have. We've been doing this for years. You just like, met her. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, it, it, yeah, no, Joe. No. I, I I don't know what to say about Joe anymore. I mean, like, it, I I feel like there's this new new thing since Trump where it's just like you know, like yeah, well he's flawed, but you know he's still a good person and stuff. I'm just like yeah, that's fine. Mm-hmm, it, it, mm-hmm. It's okay for him mm-hmm. to be a good person and flawed, and yeah, we're all flawed and stuff like that. But at this point, I'm just looking for the best possible person for the job. Yeah, <laughs> like, you know, if you if you if some mi- mystery candidate came along and they're just like you know like he's a road scholar and he has 30 years of government experience and he's never had a controversy and he's right behind this door, I would just be like. Good. Like this is what I want. I want somebody. But he has 150 IQ and he's coming right now to save you. But we uh Michael we Bloomberg, everybody. I'm just like, no, damn it! No, damn no. it! Why? You got me. <laughs> I, th- um, I thought it was gonna be real this time. We do know, however, that that candidate does exist. <laughs> yeah. he, he's running. Yeah, I in know. New Hampshire. Yeah, I know. Did, everyone's got to see the SNL where Fred Armisen plays <laughs> Bloomberg. No, no, not Bloomberg. Not Bloomberg, my friend. There is a better candidate. Now, he's only running in New Hampshire, so his chances of winning are very limited. Oh, wait but a minute. Are you talking about my favorite presidential candidate? In the in, in the in, uh, the vein of uh, the rent is too damn high. <laughs> we are being blessed once again in 2020. Vernon Supreme is back. Vernon Supreme is back. Now, if you don't know who this is, <laughs> there is a guy who took the debate stage in 20... He's the eight. He's the Andy Kaufman of presidential yeah. candidates. Uh, he wears a boot on his head, yeah. um, a bib of some variety. Uh, his clothes are a hodgepodge homeless of... Homeless chic? Yeah, homeless chic. That's exactly It's very it. derelict. But, uh, again, he was on the debate stage in New Hampshire in 2008, and like held his own with the responses. It was crazy. It was batshit crazy. But the way he delivers it, you're like, you know what? Maybe the aliens are putting thoughts in our head. I mean that makes uh, that makes he's sense crazy in a way that makes sense. Yeah, like yeah. he just knows that like if he was a regular person making these reasonable points, yeah. then nobody would listen to him. But if he's if he if he wears a boot on his head and he promises free ponies, <laughs> then he's gonna get a certain amount of attention. And then once he has that attention, if he says something real, then. People are just like, oh. I think his plan is also unending free energy by using zombies on treadmills. Yeah. I'm pretty sure yeah. that's his plan too. He, listen, trust me. He's got he's got a lot of stupid ideas that are only out there for attention. Yeah. I get it. And I know that I said I want the, you know, like the smartest and brightest and the most experienced mm-hmm. and everything like this. But at the same time, I just enjoy Vermin Supreme. <laughs> I'm allowed to enjoy him. Here's the thing. 
Um, we already got a guy. It feels it feels very like early stages of idiocracy, though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, listen, we got a guy who I think had Vermin Supreme in twenty six. Now he's a Democrat or a liberal anyway, so he only really runs in the Democratic primaries. He was there in 08. He didn't run in 2012. Didn't run in 16. I don't think. Oh, no, he did run in 16. Uh, yeah, because he was on the stage with Bernie. <laughs> I remember seeing them on stage together and being like, I don't know what to think about this. <laughs> but uh, no, so, but uh, our p- current president right now is the kind of guy who would come up with a plan like, energy, I've got your energy solution. Zombies. We're going to put them on <laughs> uh, treadmills. They're just going to continue to walk. And while they're walking, they're pumping out energy. And we would be like, uh, that doesn't seem like it makes sense. And, you know, the other half of the country would be like, Trump solved another fucking problem. <laughs> How can you guys hate him? Um, so I'm just saying it's not too far-fetched. Vermin Supreme could be a president. Um, and I'm not sure I wouldn't trust him with the football more than I would Donald Trump. I mean, I really don't want him to win. I mean, I... I, I- <laughs> I joke about how much I enjoy Vermin Supreme, but it's it's more in the like uh, I enjoy that the Redskins are a professional football team that I can laugh at. Yeah, like yeah. I don't want I don't want them actually doing anything. I don't want them being responsible for anything. But the fact that they exist is all right with me. Yeah, like, uh, I mean, listen. Uh, at least he acknowledges that he is crazy <laughs> and he knows it. Unlike uh, Trump, who is apparently. Uh, Apparently suffering from the early stages of Alzheimer's. Yeah, according to uh, a story that was definitely not leaked to the press by somebody in the executive branch. Definitely not a senior White House official upon the orders of Trump talking to someone in the in the uh, media pool. Uh, but you know, he uh, the story came this week that he doesn't remember things that he said. He doesn't remember things that are told to him. He has trouble planning in advance. He has irrational anger, all of which seems pretty on brand for the president. Honestly, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> something, something, uh, an article that could have been written in, yeah, No Shit magazine back yeah. like two years ago. Like, yeah, basically, it's like, <laughs> hey, uh, <laughs> you guys knew this and you voted for him anyway. I don't know, but we I, were I think- talking about like, is he is he mentally fit enough for the for the job? Nope. Not just in terms of like intellect, but in terms of like, is he just losing a step during the campaign? Like, yeah. this is not this, uh, you know, it, and. The problem is that, like, you know, there were so many stories of, like, people who were just like, well, I'm a psychologist and I can I can tell you just by looking at him that it looks like he has a narcissistic personality. And then it was the other side of them going like, it's not fair you to, for you to examine somebody you don't know and blah, blah, blah and all that sort of shit. Like, it, you know how, like, <laughs> uh, somebody with a, a skin condition can look at somebody else and be like, yeah, they definitely have that skin condition. Yeah. Oh, eczema. I noticed it immediately. Yes. I have yeah. the same thing. Yeah. Um. Trump definitely has narcissistic personality <laughs> disorder. I speak from a place of knowledge. He speaks fluently in on this, this topic. topic. <laughs> no, um, but no, I, I we agreed in the pre-show meeting. Uh, I want to talk about it just because it's obviously a story, but uh, clearly this is him starting that pathway to an out. We got the like, oh, mysterious heart possible thing a couple weeks ago. Now it's. Well, is he, is he, is he does all he there? Does he have dementia? Yeah, yeah. Like, maybe it'll be time for somebody to step in and convince him to step down just so he can go deal with, uh, get on some medication. And, of course, a year from now, he'll pop back up and be like, oh, I've been taking uh, glucosamine for a year, and I'm totally fine. Give me a billion dollars. I've been taking some of uh, <laughs> some of those Infowar pills <laughs> for focus and energy. Wolf spit or whatever it's Don't called. Don't they make frogs gay? Is that yeah. a thing? Is that a thing that happened? <laughs> that was a water in some place. Oh, that's yeah. right. Yeah, I just remember him screaming about f- gay frogs. Yeah, uh, but anyway. Uh, but yeah, so uh, so it's that- always funny when you when you're known for screaming about something and then somebody's just like, "What was that about?" And it's just like, I don't know. <laughs> Could it possibly matter? Like, <laughs> um, but uh, why would he start the rumor that possibly he has Alzheimer's? Well, because uh, impeachment is coming. I, you know, I, I really still would not say that the likelihood is that he will be impeached by the Senate. No, like, uh, you yeah, know, we're still there. The so. the impeachment will go through the House. That's not a that that's that's been foretold long ago. But once once it gets to the Senate, I can't imagine that they actually convict him. Oh my God! But I think that Nancy Pelosi is the evil witch of the West. <laughs> that's what I just realized. Why? She's, she's a witch. Yeah, she's from. From the West. the West. Uh, well, that part all adds up. So. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, and uh, every time I see her, I want to click my heels together and say, there's no place <laughs> like home. There's no place like home. There's no place like home. So, I mean. Yeah. It works. I think it all checks out. The, uh, I. Oh, I, and if you hit her with water, her face melts. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try that next time. I, I heard that. I heard that. That's a thing. 
if that works for the president, it's got to work for me, right? <laughs> it's, some, it's something people are saying. I don't know. Uh, it's something people are saying. So, Is that true? Uh, it's word on the street. It's out there. I don't know. I read it I, online. <laughs> Fox and Friends. I, I feel like uh, uh, Trump knows more about what's going on than anyone else does because he's ahead of the story a little bit. <laughs> He knows um, what's not been out, taken out yeah, yet. Yeah, he's no he knows what's not in the news yet. <laughs> yeah. And I just this is my personal opinion. I don't know anything. I'm not like taking this off of some source of some tweet or whatever. But like it, it just feels to me like he's preparing himself to have an out in case something all of a sudden comes out that he didn't want to be out there. And uh maybe there's a part of this whole Ukraine scandal that if there was some sort of bombshell reporting mm. uh, might mean that people would not be so likely to support him, even though he is a member of the Republican party. Here's and what's going to happen. That, if that were to happen, if all of a sudden this, this news were to break, mm -hmm. uh, then he would have to resign immediately yeah. and need some sort of reason for that because it couldn't be, I'm in trouble. It would just be like, oh, my dementia. It's acting up again. He's going to be walking past an office somewhere <laughs> in the West. Wing. I was walking along. Everything was fine. And then all of a sudden, my dementia went crazy. Yeah, he's going to be walking <laughs> past an office. He's going to look in and see CNN. And he's going to see the caption <laughs> over the picture. Trump colon, you're in trouble. But it's going to be spelled U-R-I-N-E. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he's going to just pull that tie off and <laughs> run naked across the the Rose Garden, and just be like, dementia finally kicked in. I don't know what to tell you. Not fit for office. The Norwegians are coming. The Norwegians are coming. There, yeah, that, that'll be it. I think what? we just called it right there. Yeah, and uh, and now he's laying the groundwork just for that. So as soon yeah. as that PP tape comes out. That uh, is insanity defense. Yep. Mm, laying the groundwork. I don't really say anything that I mean. You can't trust anything. <laughs> The tweets, eh, just think that in the moment. Doesn't mean anything. But literally, it's also politics. literally everything I say is jazz. It can mean anything. <laughs> Wait, what is it? Uh, sometimes I don't know what. Oh, it's uh, from Bad Boys. Racism <laughs> from Bad Boys. Uh, sometimes I don't even know what I'm going to say until I'm finished saying it. That's that's kind of how I operate. And I don't know what to tell you. Uh, but uh, I do want to take a few minutes. Uh, we're already at, already long, but uh, let's yeah. take a few minutes. And for those who are watching the YouTube video, this is for you. Because we're going to head on down to the Baltimore corner. Where you get the straight dope. Yeah. Now, if you're watching on Facebook, sorry. Nah, <laughs> just us sitting here looking at a computer screen. There would have been a graphic right here. Mm -hmm. You could have enjoyed it. But it's uh, the corner of Baltimore Street and... Uh, no, it's uh, Park and Mulberry. It's a very sad, sad corner. Uh, yeah. That's near where the train yard where they uh, they do the, like, hanging out on top of the car in the wire, right? No. Is that not it? No. It's uh, it's actually way closer to, uh, it, it's really neat. It's close to the uh, uh, Walters. Oh, really? It's like a block and a half away from Walters. Baltimore's a weird fucking place. <laughs> <laughs> a place like that looks like a bombed out wait, part wait. of the Middle East. Again, like if you are watching on YouTube, which you should be, uh, the Walters is one of the most famous museums in the world, arguably. I, it, it's a very well known art museum. Very well known collection, and. It's a very this, beautiful. Uh, uh, I, I don't want to say like campus because it's not like it's a couple multiple, buildings though, right? It's it's a couple buildings, yeah. but it's it, it's uh it's mostly like one large. And it's right off Washington Square, mm -hmm. on Charles Street, which is the main thoroughfare yeah. in Baltimore. And what Corey is saying is that one to two blocks away, a a less than five minute walk away, you will find this. Yeah. And Baltimore is a strange, strange place. It, I mean, you, you could say the same thing about like uh, City Hall, though. Here, oh yeah, no, like no. you know, like you you might take a uh, family to see City Hall. Like you're in downtown, you're don't, showing it off. You're don't turn like, around. Oh. Don't turn around. <laughs> don't walk five minutes away from it because yeah. you might end up in Skid Row. Yep. Yep. Uh, anyway, yeah. so uh, Baltimore. Uh, sad news. Uh, I think I put in the uh, caption for this episode. We've reached a new high of lows. Yeah. Or new low of highs? I'm not really sure. I'm very tired. <laughs> but uh, in any event, uh, we hit 314 murders over the weekend. Yes. Which means that we have surpassed the number of murders from last year. And last year, there were 28 murders in December, despite the cold. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's, it's going to be another cold winter, or another cold December. But uh, on that track, it would put us at uh, 249, which surpasses, or sorry, 349 which would surpass the 344, the year of the Freddie Gray riots. Yeah. 
which we thought was just the end a of number, the world. A number so unfathomable that the Baltimore Sun, when it was like the official tally for that yeah. year, just ran 344 as like a number on the front page yeah. like Big, a black square it might as well have been man lands on moon like this is yeah. the, that's how the baltimore sun decided to approach this and i think per capita it was the highest number of murders in one of or like top five of ever in baltimore i mean there have been years with yeah. more but we were also a city of 1.5 million not a city of 400,000 500,000 wherever we are now yeah I and mean, they keep like, killing people it's just going <laughs> to keep going down i don't i don't know but um, I mean, Jesus fucking Christ! Like three hundred and fourteen murders in eleven months. Yeah, and I mean, I I say kind of lightheartedly that it's like the third world, but like you might feel safer on the streets of Beirut than you do on the streets of Baltimore right now. And I don't know that I would drive Uber right now in the city of Baltimore. I, I think so much of this has to do with the fact that. It's been a combination of people giving up. Yeah. Uh, Because, like, it it started when you didn't feel comfortable telling police about anything that was happening in the neighborhood because you would die. Yeah. They would find out that you talked. If you had to testify on the stand, any of this shit, you would just be a target. You'd have to move out of your home. Like, your life becomes severely impacted because uh, you, you... Baltimore can't keep people safe. Like that's yeah, it turns out state's attorney's office has zero budget for witness protection. Yeah. Um, they're all in the same hotel and everybody knows where that hotel is. So right. you want to kill it. Just go door to door till you find your witness. And you know what? Do your buddies a favor. Just shoot everybody in the hotel and then everybody's done. So, but I mean like, you know, and then there's there, the, the problem is that it's every, every major facet of life in Baltimore has an outrageous problem associated with it. Yeah. And, all of these things, like you know, the the off the corruption in the mayor's office, followed by the awfulness of the police department, followed by the inability for the city to get anything right, like just bureaucratically, like yeah. the water bills are still all over the fucking place. There's potholes in the road that like could be bunkers in World War Two. Yeah, They're, like it, it, it's it's absurd, and all these problems sort of compound on one another. It's just like. Well, we can't fix the police department, or we can't fix the potholes because we're spending so much money on the police department. But we can't spend mon- less money on the police department because then people will say we're not putting the assets out there to fight crime. Yeah. But we can't do it. <laughs> the crime doesn't matter because the police aren't effective because nobody trusts them anymore. Like it's just like a, one problem after another that all just lead into the same thing that like we're just fucked. Like yeah. we just we're so far in the hole and it's going to be impossible to dig out. I mean, honestly, it feels like the first act of RoboCop. Yeah, <laughs> a little bit. That's what just occurred yeah. to me. It's like it's Detroit, twenty twenty five, and uh, yeah, uh, the streets are just it's the wild west, and nobody feels safe in their home. And the only thing that can bring justice is uh, a robot cop, who, by the way, might still shoot less than the Baltimore Police Department. Uh, I don't know if you remember a few weeks ago when we were talking about that video where <laughs> they just they fired like one hundred fifty six rounds at, at a guy, didn't even hit him. Like <laughs> it's you know, it, and it's almost just like. You, I wouldn't even blame Hogan if he like held a press conference tomorrow and he's just like, "Hey, on behalf of the state of Maryland, we're shutting Baltimore down." Mm. Like, <laughs> every I know, I know there were elections and everyone said that we wanted this person to be mayor and you know the city council and everything like that. But just, I'm I'm, I'm literally stopping it all. We're yeah. starting anew. Where the state is taking over this problem because they can't handle it. Like the the, the city is just too far too far in the in the shit mm, and the state guard on every corner and the state doesn't want to do anything because they don't want to get involved in the there's no easy way to fix it yeah occupation <laughs> that is literally like literally a national guardsman on every corner 24 hours a day stops the violence maybe because it could be that the guys in the row houses have better guns than the well i mean the, the other thing too is that like uh uh there, there's a story in uh malcolm gladwell's new book I just heard like an excerpt of him talking about this part of it. Look at the intellectual over here <laughs> with the Malcolm, Malcolm Gladwells, Gladwell. yeah. Mm. Uh, where, but he talked about crime in Baltimore, and he's just like the part of the problem is that people want to see police out there to make it seem like their neighborhood is safe, yeah. like to to give uh, the appearance of safety. But the sight of police officers to most people do not give them that sense of safety. Yeah. 
but it's like you have to sort of blanket the whole area with police officers for this to work. But in reality, most of the crime is happening in very specific places, really mm-hmm. close to the people where the, the criminals live, essentially. Yeah. So in the neighborhoods where they're shootings all the time, they people want the police around all the time because mm-hmm. it makes them feel safe. But at the same there, there's the the other side of like, you know, you can't just have all your cops in like the, the 15 neighborhoods, like these 15 blocks. Well, like, here's the other thing is, like, can we figure out? Because it would just sound so stupid to people if you said like, hey, there's 15 streets that are causing all the trouble. That's we're where gonna we're going to put all up. our cops there. Yeah. Because people would just be like, what do you mean there's not any cops walking around the Inner Harbor on their segways? Like, where? Well, I mean, and the other side of that is. Well, what if I'm robbed and raped? Can you put uh, all the cops where they're needed without them actually just, like, shutting down the fucking neighborhood and making everyone, like, we're here to protect you. Okay, you're not allowed to go to your house. You're not allowed to walk down the street. Let me see your papers. Where do you live? No ID. You don't get in. Like, they just, they can't fucking do it right. Like, and not that I agree with the Sean Suter thing, but, like. Part of that was in the right spirit. It was, there is a dang, well, we, we allege that there is a very dangerous person here. Someone who is so violent they would See, walk up and shoot a cop. That's a, that's a person you don't want in your neighborhood. But you don't shut down the neighborhood and inconvenience everyone for that. No, you know what? I get it. I get where they're coming from with it. I understand why you would want to shut down a neighborhood for that sort of thing. But that only goes... You know, in the immediate aftermath of what's going on. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. No, like, it's lock up every. The fact that it was like two weeks later and people are still like that, you know, it's it's like you're you're, you know, in a uh, just being like on house arrest, essentially, yeah. with the cops around all the time. Like, it's like, like, not fair to people. Like what what happens two weeks after the sh- shooting? Do you think the guy comes back then and he's just like, oh, I just wanted to admire the scene? It's like, wait a minute. Do you shoot shooter? <laughs> if it's if you want to stop all crime. Lock up every young man between 15 and 25. <laughs> now, that's really dumb. Yeah. I see the logical process that brought you to that conclusion. However, that will not really solve the problem. Just like locking It'll down It'll just make all, the, all those people angry. Yeah. For uh, when they get out. For when they get out. And then yeah. they start blowing shit up. Uh, just but, be repressed anger that goes until they're after. <laughs> yeah. But just like locking down a neighborhood for two weeks. I see the logical steps that brought you to this place where you said, this is the best solution. But it's not. Yeah. It's really just going to make people have repressed anger. And then you're going to come through this neighborhood and well, you're I mean, like, get glares. It, it, the idea is you're doing something to make it work. Yeah. So, like, you know, like, you could use the same sort of logic with, like, the Boston bombing. Like, when they started locking down neighborhoods. when oh, they when they thought they searches? Oh, yeah. But I'm, yeah. I'm not saying that it's right. I'm just saying that, like, in the at least in the moment, the Boston PD could say... We were doing everything based off the information we had. We yeah. didn't have time to like go through every single constitutional right the way that we were supposed to. We were following the spirit of the law, if not the letter of the law, and trying to protect people yeah. in this very unusual situation. Uh, it's one of those, you know, like, uh, ask, uh, apologize later kind of situations. Uh, better to ask for forgiveness than permission. Yeah. Yes. Um, and, you know, they caught the guy. So at the end of it, they could say, like, hey, listen... Well, I mean, you know, they caught the guy and they can say that at the end of <laughs> they shot the shit yeah. out of the guy in a neighborhood they didn't shut down because somebody else saw him in a different neighborhood and yeah. then they went and shot. But him I'm saying head. like it, in the view of the, the people of Boston, that was for the most part, uh, oh, yeah. well, there was there was a like, well, it was OK that you bent the rules a little bit in this case because it, it came with, with a with a victory, you know? Sure. Boston people are very used to that, like having the. uh I'm okay. It's okay if you cheated as long as you win. <laughs> so. New England in general, I would say. <laughs> but so uh, here's the thing: 314 murders. We're probably looking at a record year. Mm-hmm. We're also in the midst of a mayor- mayoral election. Who's the one who is there going to? Who's going to fix this? I don't know. Uh, Jack Young. No. Jack Young is part of the fucking problem. He's been on the city council for. 15 yeah, years. but he's not the one doing all the murders. So. Well, that's also <laughs> true. I mean, although maybe. Um, I mean, we, we don't know exactly where he's been. He's not letting us. He's not answering our questions. So. Maybe I have. Uh, maybe that's he's to blame because maybe a little Punisher justice is what we need. Maybe Jack needs to get out there and start murdering some murderers. You know what mm. I mean? Like, come on, Jack. Maybe murder is the solution here. He takes off his glasses. Nobody recognizes. <laughs> Flies away. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but no, so, I mean, Jack Young is not the solution. Uh, who else is running for mayor? Uh, Brandon Scott is running for mayor. Sure. And um, I would have said uh, a few years ago, maybe good solution. 
but yeah, I, I'm I'm less and less uh, impressed with Brandon Scott as the years go along. Uh, I, I feel like he's just been uh, welcomed too much into the Democratic fold. Yeah, and now he doesn't. He he's uh, he's gonna play ball with whatever the Democratic elders of Baltimore City, who've been doing such a bang up job so far, tell him to do. Yeah. So he's not. He's no longer his own man, in my in my opinion. Well, uh, uh, thinking back to our coverage of the election, what about uh, Carl Stokes, wh- who has been somewhere for the last four years? <laughs> you I know, assume. I I like Carl, but Carl is not the guy who fixes it. Yeah, Carl Carl will when you when you get him uh, not in politician mode, when you get him just talking like a regular person. Yeah will say all the things that everyone knows already. Yeah. Uh, so it makes it seem like he is on top of the problem because he sort of has a, a grasp of it. Mm-hmm. But then he doesn't have the ability to fix it, you know? Well, uh, it'd just be like if, if you were broken down on the side of the road, your car steaming and stuff like that. And he's just like, oh, you just blew a alternator cap. That probably happened because you haven't changed your oil in 3,000 miles. I can see the smoke coming from right there where yeah. the oil pan is you know like he's and he's going through like so specific do do? details it's just like yeah so how do i fix this it's like oh i don't know and he just walks away <laughs> that's a, that's sort of uh well how about this how about deray <laughs> he tried that already i mean i <laughs> i like deray fine i just don't like and you know i i would have been more up for it if he had a better showing last time or stayed in the city i mean it's kind of a fool last me years. once fool me yeah you know, I, I don't know. Like, well, hey, t- if you want performance, what about Joshua Harris? Green Party candidate. Uh, he nearly outperformed the Republican. Yeah. Which is saying something in Baltimore. Uh, it's not a huge amount of votes, but it's a large amount of votes. Um, 23,000 votes, I think. I just so. I just worry that if whoever... It's gonna have to be a Democrat. It's gonna even if it's somebody who's just running as a Democrat. Like if he wants to run in the Democratic primary instead of being the Green Party candidate. Yeah, but he's a leftist and he's not in the machine. Like that's what you just said you wanted from Brandon Scott. He's oh, I know, but I'm saying like part of, part of the problem here, I think, is that at the end of the day, you're gonna have to convince people to vote for you. Right. So right. if you're running as a Green, you're just gonna have a disconnect from these sort of like die in the wool democratic members of Baltimore City who are just like oh, it's, I'm not voting for anything that's not a democrat like yeah. <laughs> this is the and he he finished with about half as many votes as Catherine Pugh but Catherine Pugh's votes were split by Sheila Dixon and if Sheila Dixon wasn't in the race Catherine Pugh would have had like 90,000 votes yeah. uh to his 23,000 so. but I mean if he was the democratic nominee like if he won the primary yeah then he won the election I mean there's no there's no way that a republican is winning See, Even though I'd really, I'd really enjoy, like, really, there needs to just be a Republican in the city council. <laughs> like, yeah, hey, stop nominating old white guys to Baltimore City Mayor. Like, why are you? Alan Walden was the guy last time. Yeah, I don't know who's running this time, but like, stop nominating old white guys. That's not the city. Like, Jesus Christ. What you but, need? What it, if, if I was if I was a Republican running for uh, Baltimore Mayor, I would just want to be, just be the guy who makes so much sense. It hurts. And be the person who says, like, hey, it's been nothing but Democrats for the last 50 years. Let's try. And uh, and things have not been going well. Yeah. So why don't you want somebody who can create a little fission here? Yeah. Because, you know, the, it, it's clear that the untapped power is not working. Where There needs to be a little push and pull. Yeah. So give me a chance to try and fix things, and we'll see what happens, you know. And if there's if there's at least a foil involved, then it it makes things a little bit harder for the people who are causing all the. See, though, I hate this bullshit that it has to be Republicans and Democrats because that's uh, it exactly doesn't what, have to I be. Know, but I'm saying, just, yeah, that's exactly what Joshua Harris can provide too. It's like, hey, it hasn't worked. The Democrats aren't working, but we know that these ideas are good ideas. So let's get the machine out, bring in somebody a little further to the left, and see if that if a, a 25 or 28 year old, how old is he now? guy who's lived in the city his whole life who has good ideas but isn't part of the machine can do something yeah like fire all of the police which i think he might actually be for <laughs> i mean bring in ivan bates you, fire you, don't, Mosby. you don't have ivan to con- you don't have to convince me that a third party candidate would be beneficial for yeah. baltimore city i just feel like 
if I said no more crab, like crabs are illegal in Baltimore, then you know what the reaction would be. Like, you know, it, it's just when the crabs same. are illegal. <laughs> only criminals will eat crabs. Yeah, I mean, like it, there, there would just be like outrage and and you know, like the the conversation on this would never stop. Uh, it, it it's much the same as I can just foresee mm-hmm. the electorate of the city of Baltimore just being like, you have a couple great options. You have the Democrat. You have a Republican. It's like. Mm. You have this Green Party. I don't know. Just let me have the Democrat, whoever it is. Yeah. It's Pew again. Ah, she eh. she learned her lesson. <laughs> it's, a, it's a Pew Dixon, too. <laughs> it's a Pew Dixon uh, combo. All right. I'm going to swallow this. I'm not going to like it, but I'm going to do it. Rawlings Blake is going to be the chief of staff. Mm. <laughs> How could this possibly go wrong? Like, <laughs> Well, on the plus side, it's not like they're going to steal more money than the police department, so... <laughs> I don't know. Like, I, I just feel like there's nobody here who even has a realistic chance of like, I, I, I wish there was a, a Obama like figure yeah. who could just like be like, we need big, huge, broad change, <laughs> huge changes, like structural change and could uh, get everyone riled up for it. Well, and at the late. end of the day could be could be the the voice of. Uh, change. This is not too late. Nobody's voting for me. Why not? What they voted for Martin O'Malley a lot. Yeah, I'm. Hey, apparently they like really pale Irish guys. I they mean, <laughs> they like the fact that Martin was saying what they wanted to hear. That was oh, part of the maybe. that was part of the problem. <laughs> if I walked up onto the dais and I was just like, everyone's fucked. <laughs> like, <laughs> nobody's gonna vote for that. Larry David yeah. as a, as mayor of Baltimore. Yeah. <laughs> We're all fucked. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, I'm just going to put on my bulletproof vest and go hunker down for four years. <laughs> See you in 2024. <laughs> Vote for me for mayor because I really have very little to do with how these things work. Like, I don't, I don't know if any of you have looked at what the mayor actually does, but mm. I, I basically just okay what the city council does. Hey, listen, uh, don't you want somebody, if you're going to be stuck in a foxhole, don't you want somebody to keep a little humor around? <laughs> That's me. Come down to City Hall. I'm the one who's going to be leaving quotes on WBL. Like, well, I don't like this at all. <laughs> Jane uh, Miller is going to Jane Miller is going to walk up to me. It's just like we just passed 300 murders for the year, and I go, "Yeah, what am I committing the murders?" And then everyone laughs, <laughs> and then we move uh, on with fixing the issue somehow. Yeah, somehow. We'll figure it out. I'm not the one committing the murders. <laughs> Question mark. No more murders. That's how that works. <laughs> Thanks, Jack. <laughs> When the murderer murders, the only one who's left is the murderer. That's, that's absolutely true. That's, Jane Miller's like, none of that made sense. <laughs> <laughs> no more questions. You, you just said you just said murderer Ooh. over and over again. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know what the point was. Uh, uh, talking about no, knowing what the point is. Oh, the anthem dot com. Corey do the anthem dot com. The anthem on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and the listener line four four three two one nine seven five nine five. What's that number again? Four four. Four four three two one nine seven five nine five. I don't know where anything is right yeah. now. Uh, all right, and we're back. Yes, <laughs> feels like it's getting dark here. Too. I think it is. I think the lights are dying. Huh. It's getting a little fuzzy in the background. Yeah. Anywho, this is not a good night. Uh, you can find more of me and my website CoreyBakerFilmmaker dot com, uh, Facebook dot com forward slash CoreyBakerFilm, and at LegendCB five on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat. Um, I will be doing a review on the Irishman. Mm. Uh, I just have to get through the last 30 minutes of it. Oh, is that uh, how far you are? Yeah, I got yeah. I got three hours into it, and I still have 30 minutes left to go. So I'm taking Bill Simmons' advice. I'm going to break it down like a miniseries and yeah. just like watch episodic. Well, I mean, like I, I, I feel like I'm going to have to sort of like watch it again, too, <laughs> just to like uh, sort of catch the salient points for a discussion on it. Mm-hmm. But a uh, 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 quick preview. Way too long. <laughs> Outrageously too long. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and beyond that, I think we're gonna go see Knives Out. So I'll do yeah, a review on that week. as well. So yeah, yep. And of course, you can find more of me at Robert N. Cheek on all your social networks. Mm-hmm. Oh, I got to get past the computer to get done. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Uh, you can find more information at robertncheek.com. We can find links to. Uh, the blog and the uh, Patreon and the books, which are available on Amazon. Barrow's books. And uh, 
a lot going on on the YouTube page. I did a uh, travel journal on Friday. I did my, oh, uh, my No Shave November uh, shaving video went up again as a reminder. Uh, I'm actually going to do another live stream later tonight when I shave off the No Shave November beard to start over again. Uh, and I'm still... Uh, Are you going the, down to the, I, I'm gonna start to the nitty later. gritty? It's, it is, it's not in good shape. So I'm going to, because I haven't trimmed the entire time. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to take it down to the skin again and then just like keep it trimmed after that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, I can accept donations until Friday. So if you're feeling generous in this holiday season... Uh, Go ahead over to uh, I don't know my Facebook page. I think I have it. Yeah. If um, you're if you're listening to this on the day that it's released, and why, why wouldn't, wouldn't you? you? Uh, it's Giving Tuesday, so yep. why don't you uh, give a little bit of money for uh, what causes? What's it? It's Men's Health. Just uh, there's like yeah. three or four different charities, like prostate cancer. Uh, uh, it's a bunch of of um, ch of uh, uh, testicular cancer, prostate cancer. It's like. Uh, th uh, any organization that uh, either affects men more than uh, others mm. or solely for men. Well, um, so. we we need men. Yes, that's uh, at least at sad least but men. true. Yeah. <laughs> um. And uh, so yeah. So check out the videos that are there. I'm gonna have a new video up uh, with me reshaving and pleading for money again on Facebook. <laughs> but uh, uh, I also have all my usual reviews up, and including this week. Uh, this Thursday is going to be uh, a beautiful day in the neighborhood. So oh. go and check that out. And then, of course, Knives Out will be uh, following that, obviously, because we're going to go see Knives Out. So, And uh, I saw uh, six six movies on airplanes. So <laughs> I might just do a, a special mini series: The Airplane Files and the <laughs> terrible movies I watched on airplanes. Um, yeah, uh, I, I made a decision to watch things I would never watch at home, like one called Anna and the Apocalypse, which is a British movie about a girl named Anna who's a teenager. It is a Christmas musical during the zombie I've been, apocalypse. I've been thinking about, like, uh, there's some movies that like I watch on Netflix that aren't, like, goodly enough for a <laughs> yeah, full not review. Really movies. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's the, the red box movie come Netflix kind of thing. Yeah. But I, I wish... That like like sometimes I think like maybe I should just do like a Instagram like sixty second <laughs> review where I'm just like hey this is Corey from CoreyBakerFilmmaker dot com and I'm just doing a quickie Instagram story review mm -hmm. of terrible movie yes and I'm just like it's terrible <laughs> terrible movie was terrible all the acting was terrible the directing was terrible I would give it an eight point eight bye <laughs> that sounds like a Corey Baker <laughs> filmmaker review uh, however I would say that uh, if I was to do an Everyman movie review of those kind of movies on Netflix uh, yeah. the standard would be did the noise from the television fill the empty void in my life? <laughs> Did it make me stop thinking about the things that go on in my life? Thumbs up. Yes. Because uh, really, that's what I want from Netflix. I just don't want to be left alone in silence with my own thoughts. Because that's how... <laughs> that's how I don't mind. get to sleep at night. Yep. That's just how I lay up with my thoughts. And I'm not trying to do that. So uh, either Office, again, for the thousandth time, or random movie that just <laughs> happens to pop up in my recommendations. So... Well, things are getting dark, so I think we've done good here today. <laughs> we've done something. I don't know if it's good. But as always, you're listening to the O the Anthem podcast, part of the O the Anthem digital network. For Corey, this is Rob, and I'm very, very tired. But have a great week, everybody. Go to sleep already. <sighs>